The Crusader Conversation, informative, local, and student-focused. The show bringing newsmakers of Valparaiso University to share their story. This is the Crusader Conversation. Hello and welcome to Crusader Conversation. I'm your host, Brendan Kinney. On this show, we'll be featuring various students, faculty, and staff members. They'll be highlighting special events and projects around Valparaiso University's campus. Now, today's guests are Professor Allison Schutte. She's in the English department, and she's the uh, faculty advisor for the lighter. And then also Ian Rosine. He is a junior English major as well, and he is the assistant editor for the lighter magazine. So welcome, both of you, to the Crusader Conversation. Thanks Glad for having us. Glad to have you here today. And now to start out uh, with the basics. Uh, let's talk about what is the lighter. Okay. <laughs> the lighter is the uh, literary journal and fine art journal for the university. Um, it is staffed by undergraduate students, but it is open for submissions from all VU students, including the law school. Excellent. And uh, Ian, let's talk a little bit about where students can find the magazine. Now I've seen them around campus, but is there any online presence? I know you were talking about Twitter earlier, um, but where, I guess, if a student wanted to find a lighter magazine, where would they find it? Um, you should actually be able, to, like you said, be able to find it pretty much anywhere on campus if you want a, a physical copy of it. We've um, tried to make sure that, you know, you know, any building is pretty well stocked with them, and if you do find them, um, something that people usually don't pick up on is um, you can take them back with you. Like you can have an issue for yourself. You don't have to read it and leave it there. Um, but otherwise, we are on Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr too. And um, uh, I guess if you want to submit anything to the lighter, the um, email address is the lighter at valpo.edu. So that's another way. You can find us if you have any questions. There's about also the um, a coffee house at the end of every semester, fall and spring, and that's when the new edition of the lighter is launched. Mm -hmm. So that would be another place you can always find it. Right. And this year's coffee house is um, December 10th from about 7 o'clock to 10 p.m. Um, in the Art Psych building. Excellent. Um, now, talk a little bit about how a student can get their work in the lighter if they're just sitting in their room and they come up with a great poem um, can they then they would submit it to the website or the email address and then you would look at that and and then I guess we'll talk about the selection committee as well on top of that so Ian what what does a student do if they if they have a great idea ab about a poem or another literary um, uh, well write it down and then um, <laughs> Make sure you know it's the best possible version of it that they can make it, and then, like by all means, absolutely submit it to the email address that I said earlier. You know, the dot lighter at valpo um, And then it doesn't. It's, it's not assured that it will get accepted or not, because then it goes through the process of being on the selection committee, um, or being reviewed by the selection committee. And there's three of those. There's one for poetry. One for prose, which is, you know, it could be fiction, it could be uh, an excerpt from a play that you wrote or a piece of nonfiction. And then there's also artwork, which, um, again, you can submit artwork as well as written material. Um, but, and that, and the, each piece is reviewed by a panel of students who signed up to be on each of these selection committees. And that's another way that you can get involved, even if you don't have anything to submit. You can absolutely sign up to be a part of the team uh, because it's a student-run publication, and you know you decide what goes in ultimately. And um, on the night, it's one night each for each issue for each committee or section of the lighter. But then you know we'll go, you go in, and you. We go over each piece and we vote on what goes in and what doesn't. And that actually um, is completely up to the other students that sign up. The, the editor and myself and the graphics design editor 
don't have anything to do with that. It's all up to the students that want to. So do you find, I don't know about how much connection you actually have with the artists or the writers that submit work to the lighter, but um, do you find that you, fi you have a lot of art majors, you have a lot of English majors, or really is it across the board? You have engineering majors that submit work, or what is the demographics then for people that submit their work? I mean, I think it is a lot of English and, you know, creative writing or art majors, but I mean, it's surprising, like, people, and that's like the great thing about the lighter, is that really it's a good chance for anybody who doesn't have a chance to write, especially in, or express themselves artistically, um, to get their work out there, even if they're not in a major that doesn't immediately kind of, or that isn't immediately conducive to that kind of work. Sure. And we get submissions from everybody. Now as faculty advisor, Allison, now when you publish this magazine at the end of each semester, correct? Yes. Um, is it your eyes see this, the publication last before it goes off to printing or no, what, what are your no, duties as faculty off. advisor? <laughs> oh, hands off, okay. Um, the students get to decide all of that. Um, so if there was ever a concern or an issue, I might step in and look at a piece and give my input on whether it should be included or not. Or, but um, my, my role is really to get together with the different editors. Usually at the beginning of the semester, we worked together um, this last summer even, to talk about um, the vision they have for whatever edition that they're going to put out, um, to make sure that they're following the schedule and staying on track that way. Um, but in terms of the actual content itself, that is all student-driven. And now, are there any lines that you have to draw as assistant editor, Ian, or as faculty advisor that this is a little bit too over the line with us being an independent Lutheran university, or have those issues not come up? And I guess you both you can talk about that with you being the assistant editor, Ian. In my experience, it hasn't really come up. And a lot of that, again, when it's you know being reviewed by the selection committee, that I'm sure is something that goes into the consideration of each person that's on there. You know, people will feel a certain way, and if it is too, I don't know, maybe controversial, maybe they would be less apt to put it in. But so far as like whether we make the final decision on whether it's you know acceptable for our university to publish it or not, I haven't run into. Yeah, any I don't problems. think there are any specific um, ethical guidelines because we're a Lutheran university. There's just the artistic guidelines. Mm -hmm. So if there's a reason for something to be in a story um, and it has aesthetic weight um, and it contributes to the overall meaning of the piece or with art, same mm -hmm. thing, then it has a place in the lighter. Now, Ian, talk a little bit about how you got involved with the lighter. Um, well, last year I was on a selection committee, just like anybody else can be, for the prose um, section. And then just over, and I've been, you know, involved in like the in English classes, obviously. And so I think, um, I don't know, I was approached by the current editor, Jeremy Reed, and he asked me if I wanted to be the assistant editor. And I said yes, and then, <laughs> so that's, I don't know, I guess I was qualified for the position. But then, I don't know, and I've been submitting stuff to the lighter, I think as early as freshman year, certainly since sophomore year, and I, this year as well. Excellent. And then the rest is history, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess we can say. Well, we have more coming up with uh, Ian and Allison after the break. Stay tuned. I'm Molly, and I'm, I'm on VU TV. All right. We're from, from Kappa Kappa Gamma. We're on VU TV. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm the WVUR general manager, and I'm on VU TV. We're, we're on Waves, and we're on VU TV. I'm Emily. And I'm Aliana. And we're on VU TV. Hey, what's up? I'm Milk. And I'm Matt. We're on VU TV. I'm Helen Dolly, and I'm on VU TV. Hi. Hi. My name's Claire. My name's Sarah. And we're, we're on, on VU TV. We're Kappa Delta, and we're on VU TV. I'm Rachel, and I'm on VU TV. Hi, I'm Matthias. I'm Hillary. And I'm Philip. And we're, we're on, on VU TV. I'm Tom, and I'm on VU TV. I'm Amanda, and I'm on VU TV. Hey, I'm Ted, and I'm on VU TV. We're Valparaiso Ultimate, and we're on VU TV. 
We're UPC and we're on VU TV. We're the Torch and we're on VU TV. We're Delta Sigma Pi and we're on VU TV. We're Student Senate and we're on VU TV. We're Blue Box and we're on VU TV. We're Alliance and we're on VU TV. We're the Crusader Pet Band and we're on VU TV. We're Mesa and we're on VU TV. We're Handles, and we're on VUTV. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kathleen, and I am with Housing Opportunities, and I am on VUTV. Hi, we're the Lutheran Deaconess Association, and we're on VUTV. We are Greek University, and we're on VUTV. I'm ROTC, and I'm on VUTV. I'm Zach Clark, and I'm on VUTV. We're Sigma Phi Epsilon, and we're on VUTV. Hello and welcome back to Crusader Conversation. I'm Brendan Kinney, here with English professor Allison Schutte and then also English, junior English major Ian Rosine. He's assistant, assistant editor of The Lighter. And then we were just talking about before break, uh, the selection committee. And um, Allison, you were talking a little bit about uh, the dynamics in the group? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think one of the things I love about The Lighter is the way that it contributes to the writing culture and the art culture that's here on campus. Um, and the selection committees is one of the places where that gets built. So um, it's students who love talking about art, who love talking about writing, uh, what makes it good, um, and somebody having to stand up and um, try to defend a piece and why they want it in. Um, I think that sort of social conversation that happens among the students not only brings them together as a committee um, but also builds a larger kind of community that spills out beyond the the publication of the lighter itself now can anybody that submits a piece that you're maybe on the edge with can they come in and then defend their piece or how does <laughs> Actually, how does that we all work say too that all of the pieces are are anonymous yeah Ex okay. that's why the editors can't um, contribute to the the conversation because they know who the people are that wrote them. Um, so in the discussion, people don't know whose pieces they're talking about. And I think that's oh, essential. Yeah. And oftentimes, there's at least a few actual authors of the pieces in the selection committee. So that's something, yeah. And that they is. usually choose not to talk, right? They <laughs> or do. How does that work? <laughs> yeah, they kind of, it's, it's funny, you like observe, if, you, if you're in the know about it, you just observe like how there's just like all of a sudden these passionate discussions, at least then when it comes to the person's actual piece, like there's a slight withdrawing, mm. like. Yeah. Hey, that's my piece. Don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> don't talk or about it that way. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to sway it one way or another. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So some exciting news. This past spring, uh, you were named the Literary Magazine of the Year. And now, um, congratulations first off. Thank you. What kinds of things do they look at? I'm sure the, obviously the content, but then um, I'm sure there's other aspects of, of the magazine that they look at. Do you know what those are? Well, for the Literary of the Year Award, it would be the quality of the content overall, but then the layout and the design as well. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the lighter in the last couple of years has just been really stellar in how it, um, the, the shape of the book, the square shape of the book, I think is unique about it, as well as the quality of the art and then the kinds of design that go um, go inside as well. So it's the layout as well as the content. And now, was this your first time winning this award? No, actually it was the second. Yeah. Very and nice. there were individual pieces that were also chosen for awards for individual writers in the different genres. And so, so the magazine then overall last spring was awarded the Literary Magazine of the Year, but then were there any individual awards this past spring that won those awards? Yes. Those individual? Okay. Yes. Like some, um, some people got it for poetry, some people got it for drawing, um, that sort of thing. So there were individual prizes that were given out as well. Okay. And then Ian, what would you say if, if any um, student is watching um, and they're thinking, this sounds like something that I want to get involved with. Um, obviously the, the email address, which you can, you can give out again. Mm -hmm. um, but then what, what kind of qualifications are you looking for, for people both on the selection committee and also um, the editors, the, I guess the, I can't, the, the higher ups <laughs> in the lighter magazine? Okay. Um, well, so far as 
submitting, I think the nice thing is that there are no qualifications, but I mean, just keeping in mind that we do look for, you know, an effort to be put forth for quality. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of blanking. So far as like the higher ups go, um, that's kind of, I think you, you can apply for Anybody these positions, right? Um, I think it's typically kept within like the English department. Am I no, right? No, no. Actually, I mean, if you want, anybody could apply for editor of the lighter. Anybody. Okay. Um, but typically, you get interviewed about your experience. So if you haven't been involved with the journal, then mm -hmm. you probably are less likely to be chosen for it. But anybody could do that. Right. And then the positions of assistant editor and graphic designer are selected by myself and the, um, the editor. OK. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, um, but yeah, and so far as like getting involved other ways, um, you know, this semester's issue is kind of, you know, we're editing it and it's like, you know, on its way to and from the printers, you know, this week, I think even. Um, but I would encourage anybody to go to the Lighter Coffee House because um, that's the next big thing that we'll be having and it's a great way to, you know, get to meet some of the people who, have gonna, who are going to be published in this, um, meet, you know, Professor Schutte and myself and anybody else who's on the staff. Um, and then just get involved with and get to know what it is and be able to pick up a issue right there. Yeah, one of the best ways to know whether to submit your stuff is to look at some of the stuff that's been mm -hmm. accepted. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the kinds of um, things that, that the editors are looking for. And now as we, uh, as we end on our conversation here, what, what do you see in the future for the lighter? It could be five, ten years down the road, or even for next semester? How do you see the lighter expanding, um, maybe going uh, online? Uh, so what do you see? Um, I mean, it is going to be going online, although I'm not sure if... <laughs> like, That's in the works. <laughs> yeah, it's in the yeah. works, and also I think we're going to have like a bigger revelation of that at the Lighter Coffee House. Oh, I see a little plug for the so, Coffee House, I see. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But the print copy is very, very important to the Lighter. Yeah. Um, so we don't necessarily, we don't see that going away. Mm -hmm. Any online presence would be in a supplement to what we, what right. we already have. Excellent. Well, um, I wish you the best and thank you so much for coming in. Again, congratulations on winning the, the Literary Magazine of the Year in the state of Indiana. That's fantastic. And again, Ian, real quick, where is the coffee house when this is taking place? Um, December 10th from at 7 o'clock um, in the Arts Psych Building. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. And stay tuned because Rachel Miscavitz from the Christopher Center will be joining us next year on the Crusader Conversation. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Crusader Conversation. I'm Brendan Kinney, and right now we're joined with Rachel Muscovitz. She's uh, the Assistant Professor of Library Services at the Christopher Center here on campus. So welcome to the Crusader Conversation, Thank Rachel. Thank you. And so we'll start out by uh, having you explain what your role is as um, a professor in the Christopher Center. Okay. Well, I'm an assistant professor, like you said, mm -hmm. of library services. I'm also one of the public services librarians. So that means I do instruction sessions, I do reference work, I buy books and other materials for my collection areas. My areas are uh, foreign languages, um, sociology and criminology, classics, and I also do the interlink buying. So I do a lot of classes with them, introducing them to the library, helping them with projects, that sort of thing. So it's one big classroom, yeah, really. Basically. I guess it's not always thought of as necessarily an academic building, maybe just a place where you would study, but mm. it's much more than that. And we're going to be talking a little bit a little bit about that yeah, today. Yeah, we like to say that it's not just you don't go there just to get information, you go there to create information as mm -hmm. well. 
And so let's talk a little bit about uh, the fact that students can actually make appointments with librarians such as mm -hmm. yourself. Absolutely. Every major and every, every um, study area at uh, Valpo has a librarian that corresponds to it. It's kind of, you know, we've been joking about there's an app for that. Well, there's a librarian for that. <laughs> And you can make appointments with us to help with your research, with your study, studying for your papers and everything. Um, we really encourage that. You can um, contact us through email, through the phone. Um, pretty soon, I think right now we have a form up online where you can actually make an appointment that way. So get in touch with us any way you can. We would love to help you guys. Excellent. And now do you, do you see a lot of students come in and make those appointments or is it something that just students aren't really aware of? I don't think many students are aware of that. A lot of the times we'll have people come to the reference desk, which is the main area on the second floor. And if we're in our offices and the student assistants can come back and get us, we kind of make it that way. Mm -hmm. Or we'll make an appointment after, say, an instruction session and someone's confused and they need to come for extra help. But other than that, I don't think many students know about it. And it's a good resource. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's why you're here. Yeah, exactly. And now your office is located on the second floor, mm -hmm. right kind of near the reference desk, correct? Yes, right behind it on, on the wall on the right-hand side. We call that librarian row. It's a, just a bunch of librarians' <laughs> offices. And now let's talk uh, about the archives at mm -hmm. the library. Now, uh, I, was, I had a chance to go into the archives and get, um, I guess, a tour mm -hmm. by Mel Doring, yes, uh, who's still yes. at the archives. Do you know how long he's been on campus? Oh, I don't. <laughs> You but it's been there. a little while. It's been a, it's, yes, it's been quite some time, yes, and we love Mel. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he, of course, gave us stories um, of Valpo from back in the day and then mm -hmm. also took us to that room where um, there's really old books. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure dating back to the beginning of the university and even before that. Oh, yeah, we have, um, we have all the old yearbooks, and we're in the process of actually digitizing those and getting those online. Oh, excellent. But we also have um, old Lutheran manuscripts. Um, we have one that supposedly has Martin Luther's handwriting on it. We can't really? prove it, but we're pretty sure. And we also have a, um, a King James Bible from the, um, from the 1600s. Wow. In the mid 1600s. So yeah, we've got a lot of really cool stuff in there. That's fantastic. And students can come in too. It's not just faculty. Students mm -hmm. can come in, and we have some fun stuff too. Like say you're doing a paper on great mustaches of Valpo's administration, <laughs> and you want to prove that um, Provost Schwein has the biggest mustache <laughs> in the history. Yeah. Well, you would find out that he doesn't. That was actually O. P. Kinsey in 1906, who has this fantastic mustache going into some mutton chops. And we have a graphic of that, and you can see. I mean. Every, everything's connecting. Oh, he's serious <laughs> about it. That's, no, that's, not, that's not a joking around mustache. No, not at all. <laughs> Provost Schwein has nothing. Yes, unfortunately, this, yes. Although it's gentleman. very dignified in its own right. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we don't, we're very approving of that yes. here on campus. Um, so what do you find that students do in the archives? Those that are interested in history or mm -hmm. just students that are just interested in I guess the, learning about um, the university. Valpo history is very strong that we have. We have old grade books. Um, we get a lot of questions from outside of the community or uh, alumni who are calling and want to know the, you know, if what years their great grandfather attended here. Mm -hmm. But we also have a class right now that is researching old university buildings. Um, last year or the year before, they did the McIntyre Court and they researched those buildings. And now they're doing, I believe, the area of Linwood House. I'd have to check with our archivist, Judy Miller. But it's a whole class coming in and doing that kind of information, and we do have that. Excellent. Yeah. But then students come in, come in individually. Absolutely, and then, yeah. And then do work. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, you can walk into our reading room, or you can make an appointment with Judy Miller, who's our archivist. Excellent. And yeah. then do they then have free reign over the, the archives? Or I'm sure there's a few things that they say, okay, well, stay away from this, or how does that They're not work? allowed to go back in that back room. We, they would bring the information out to mm -hmm. them. And if it's very delicate, we might limit some things. But sure. other than that, most of it's pretty, pretty open. Excellent. And now what are some of the other services at the library? Of course, the Academic Success Center mm -hmm. is available to students, the Writing Center, mm -hmm. um, taking families on tours. There's just so much information at the library that it's really hard to, to keep it down to right. um, you know, the few minutes that we have in the library to talk Speaking about Speaking of the ASRS though, if you are coming into, into um, town and with your parents and you want them to have a demonstration of the ASRS, we can totally do that. Just ask it circulation. They'd be happy to demonstrate it. We like our robot. What exactly is the ASRS? Okay, it's the Automatic Storage and Retrieval System, and it um, helps us get more materials in the building because these are 
these are really condensed. They're um, materials that aren't used quite as often as just in the stacks. Mm -hmm. And one of the unique things is that we store it on site. We were actually one of um, the first of five um, universities to get the system in general in, um, in the history of, of it being used in libraries. It was originally made in Detroit for auto parts. Um, and we're one of the few that have it actually on campus in, in the building. Mm -hmm. Other people have it for off-site storage to hold a lot more books and materials. Mm -hmm. But the difference between that is if you order something from them, it takes them about a day to get there. It takes us about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's the yeah. benefit of having it right there in the building. And it's fun to watch, too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It makes a huge clunking noise, kind of giant arms. Yeah, a little scary. Just back yeah, off a little just bit, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, Christmas decorations are stored there. Oh, yeah, there. Christmas decorations. <laughs> not just books. Oh, no, not just books. We joke that we can fit people in there, but we haven't yet. That's, um, that's good. We have um, manuscripts. Uh, we have um, papers of different uh, faculty members. We have these shovels that broke the ground for the building. So those kinds Excellent. of stuff are stored in there. Um, but yeah, that is fantastic that right on site mm -hmm. and I guess we just take advantage of that because yeah. we don't really know anything different. So um, two, we want to talk about some money Absolutely. that's available to students. So we are trying to give you guys money. <laughs> yeah, talk about that. I mean, who doesn't want who doesn't want free some money? cash? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, we've got um, our library award for undergraduate research, which sounds scarier than it is. We've been trying to play with the name and figure out how to get it. So it doesn't sound like you have to write a research paper. This is an annual award of $1,000 that we give out um, in May during our Authors' Day, where we, we, um, we also um, honor the faculty that have written a book in the past year. This is when we give out the award. But basically, you don't have to write a research paper for it. That is the biggest misconception. You take a research paper that you have done during the previous year, and you write a 750-word essay about how you use the library's resources. That's the only new thing you have to write. And you have the possibility of winning a $1,000 award nice. for 750 words essay that you don't have to research for. You just have to contemplate about how you yourself use these resources. The only other thing that we require is just a note from your professor that said you were in that class during that semester and you finished the project. And that's it. And you could win $1,000. That's great. Which we have on a giant check, so that's fun too. <laughs> Just like the publisher's clearing house yeah, exactly. with balloons and things exactly. like that. Yeah, oh. exactly. With, with your name and everything. That'd be fun. Yeah, we um, hope. <laughs> now, just to get this straight, so you can mention a research paper that you've done in the past year. Mm -hmm. In so the past calendar year. So you submit that along with the 750 Correct. word essay? Correct, yes. I see. And, and then th are there any specifications on the essay th or the research paper that you have to do? No, not at all. We've. Um, oh. It doesn't actually even have to be a paper. We know that some projects, like you would in communication, do um, end up in some more creative work, say mm -hmm. a, a, um, a video or something. But if you do research behind it, that's the really important part. How you use the library, how you use the databases, if you, you know, use interlibrary loan to get a book from Switzerland. This is the kind of stuff we want to know. Excellent. Well, yeah, I hope students take advantage of that. I hope so, too. $1,000 with balloons and, yep. and everything, yeah. <laughs> Last year, we had six entrants, and that's it. Six people it. did that. Of a school of 4,000. Exactly. I hope that, and then also open to graduate students as well? Um, it's, an under, under, it's undergraduate, undergraduate research, so okay. yeah, so not open to grad students, but everybody else. <laughs> that's fantastic. And then just a few seconds left, Rachel. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the Facebook page, how students can get involved with that. Yes, we do have a Facebook page, and that's where you can get the, what, the most current news from the library. We have a lovely little Facebook button right on the library webpage. You can click on that, you can like us, and then it will come into your wall, and, and the postings will show up. We also have a Twitter page, and for that we try to do, you know, most the most recent stuff, like the ASRS is down for the next 10 minutes. That will, stuff will be on mm -hmm. Twitter. And we also have a YouTube page, which we have put some of the collaborations that we've done with, with VUTV on. Excellent. Yeah. So we're all up with the 21st century. That's, yes, yes, that's we are trying to update. Yes, us librarians are, are modern, I swear. Excellent. <laughs> well, I appreciate all that you do at the library. Oh, and thank you. And thank you so much for coming in to the Absolutely Crusader no Conversation. Absolutely no problem. It was, it, was, it was fun. We appreciate it. And thank you for joining us as well here on the Crusader Conversation. We hope you join us for our next episode. From everybody here at VUTV, Take care.